Hello. Welcome. Good morning. Have you heard about this thing called sports? I don't really know much about it, but uh, apparently this is You Don't Know Jack, completely based on it. So, yeah, so I played the demo of this <laughs> back in the day, but I've never been a sports person. You know, I know how to play a sport. Occasionally I play a sport. I run and play golf sometimes. But I don't really know sports. <laughs> Much less sports during the era this was made. So this is going to go real bad, probably. But if I'm going to play all the You Don't Know Jacks, I want to give it a try. So let's do it. Let's try it. You Don't Know Jack Sports. No, I got it. The commercials are my favorite part. Hockey. Okay, I got it right here. Hello, people. How you doing? Hi, Cookie. My name's Cookie. How many people are going to be playing the game? Still just me, Cookie. So you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie, please. Sorry, just type your name in, okay? Oh! Good, you're... Oh, yeah. Are you looking for a seven-question tournament-length game or a full 21-question deal? We're going all in. All right, that's what I needed to know. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in Betty Bakes Me Bread. Oh, good. Oh, you got your whole Make it happen before about. I blow a gasket. 20 seconds. Okay, 20 seconds. Pay attention here and don't screw it up. As soon as you I'm going to screw it up. I am going to do that. In, then you got to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? Good luck. Okay, here we go. Lose the desktop. Okay, thank you. Um, go to black. That? Okay, great. Okay, guys, stand by. Order delivery. Order today. Oh, Jelly Vision logo is a different color now. Yeah, yeah, sure, I can be a jock. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. And look at the sports. Right, welcome to You Don't Know Jack. What's the matter? Don't got any friends? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's you and me. Okay, you ready to fly? Blast off. All right. How about it? Hit me with the category. Oh, goodness. Um, pro athletes and other large corporations. One. Here's the category. Pro athletes and other large corporations. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Ready on the trigger? Paul. Refrigerator is to microwave as William Perry is to whom? Jim Kelly, Gaylord Perry, Patrick Watt, or Vinny Johnson? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm gonna go so bad at this. Um. Um. Swank, that's William the Refrigerator Perry and Vinny the Microwave Johnson. I can't believe I got that. <laughs> Alright, a player with an ice cold career and a player that causes cancer. Woohoo! Nice. Okie doke, well, give me a category. Yeah, funny sports, that's what I need. Yes, we do. We got spirit. How about two? The category is funny sports. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. All right, get yourself set. It's time. If Ronald McDonald were to lose his regular job, where else could he go to find work as a clown? The National Finals Rodeo, the NHRA Winter Nationals, Wimbledon, or the Pro Bowlers Championship? Take it away. At the rodeo, the clowns distract the right. bulls when the riders get bucked off. <laughs> so call him Ronald McRodeo Clown. Or if he's not careful, hold on. Call him hamburger. Category time. What's it gonna be? Uh, slug nightmares. Three. Here's your category. Slug nightmares. And this one. I don't even know what kind of question $1, types this has. Hope you're ready, cause here's one I, I doubt it has gibberish questions. Grab the kids, load up the minivan, and head out for a fabulous vacation in the Bonneville Salt Flats. If you use the Salt Flats for their famous use, how will you spend your vacation? Land yachting, marathon conditioning, setting land speed records, or racing ostriches? Uh, the land speed records, right? You and your loved ones will be setting land yeah. speed records. The Salt Flats are a smooth 12 mile stretch, perfect for pushing that minivan to the limit. <laughs> Dad, I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, Billy, why didn't you say something before we broke the sound barrier? 
Okay, pick a category. Uh, grab some Trojans. This one's gonna be grabbing some Trojans. And All right, pay let's out do it. Thousand dollars for this one. Hang on tight. Here we go. If the Greek soldiers of the Trojan Wars had been subject to the rules of Greco-Roman wrestling, which of the following battle tactics could the Greeks not have used against the Trojans? Squeezing the Trojans between their legs, lying on top of a Trojan when he's on his back, grabbing the Trojans by their heads, or lifting the Trojans off the ground. I say lifting. In a word, no. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> well, in case you're curious about the correct answer. In Greco-Roman wrestling, use of the legs is considerably restricted. Not illegal, however, is the highly effective get inside a horse and surprise your opponent maneuver. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Hitting a home run and hitting a home run. <laughs> and this category is hitting a home run and hitting a home run. This question's worth $2,001 bills. All right, let's get this ball rolling. Which phrase can be both the report of a sexual escapade and the name of a man who played more career baseball games than anyone else? Pete Rose, Raleigh Fingers, Herbert J. Score, or Warren Spahn? Oh, my God. Um... <sighs> Take it away. I'm going to go with Raleigh Fingers. Raleigh Fingers? Hmm. I guess that mustache really chafes too much. Yeah. yeah okay. Should have picked this. Pete Rose is known for rising to the occasion in 3,562 games. Yeah, that friction from all those headfirst slides was sure to have some effect on him. How about it? Hit me with the camera. Uh, I'll cheat at tennis. An abominable performance. It makes me sick. And the category is. Cheating at tennis. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Imagine you're playing the top-seeded tennis player at Wimbledon and know you'll probably lose in straight sets. Which of the following could you legally do to distract the other player? Allow a wasp to sting you, then scream, throw your racket, introduce a second ball into play, or shout, miss it, miss it. Um, say the wasp. According to the United States Tennis Association rulebook, a scream resulting from a sudden wasp sting would be considered an involuntary means of hindering an opponent, therefore perfectly legal. There we go. And I hear John McEnroe used to bring an actual beehive to his matches. Category time. What's um, it gonna be? License to swill. Tag team naked skydiving tonight at 7. And the category is license to swill. Oh, yes, this one's worth 3,000 bananas. So, you feeling anxious? Me too. Let's go. If James Bond had been a member of the 1995 St. Louis Cardinals, what high tech mechanism could he have taken advantage of in Bush Stadium? An escalator goes up to the bullpen. Home plate glows in the dark. Dugout seats can eject players to the locker room or the pitcher's mound lowers into the field. <laughs> You know, I'm sure that for some question, that is the right answer. Oh, okay. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. When Bush Stadium had artificial turf, the pitcher's mound actually raised and lowered from the playing field. And I'll bet James would have a particular interest okay. in the moving mound at Bush. Sure. Okie doke, give me a category. Oh, uh, always hurt the ones you love. Uh oh, test nuts lit crime They store. do have gibberish questions in this game. It's time for a liquor business. <sighs> this gibberish questions category is You always hurt the ones you love. The opening value is five thousand dollars. Okay, now remember the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. Okay, listen up and tell me what product slogan does this rhyme with? Gruff smack and sin back in. Whoa, was it ever out? Ooh, you think you got it, okay. There we go. And for the fire in John Madden's feet, well, I suggest he save a little money and just stop, drop, and roll. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Um, famous tall looks great in makeup. Runners, take your mark. Set. 
the category famous tall and looks great in makeup okay shouldn't be too tough this question's gonna be worth a grand okay help me out here I can't remember who that guy is he's really really tall yet extremely coordinated he played Arnold's teacher on different strokes fought Bruce Lee in a karate movie and holds basically every NBA record who is he is he Shaquille O'Neal Wilt Chamberlain Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Dwayne Shinses <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yep. Personally, I would have preferred to see him fight Arnold instead of Bruce Lee. What you talking about? Okay, pick a category. Yeah, part list is for a furry blue guy. <laughs> Hang ten. The name of this category is Important Lessons from a Furry Blue Guy. Okay, swing this one and I'll give you two thousand bucks. Ready? Imagine this episode of Sesame Street. In today's lesson, Grover wants to demonstrate the concepts of inside and outside using college football's famed Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside. To what school must he travel? UMass, Syracuse, <laughs> Nebraska, or Army? Christ. Oh. Swing away. Nebraska. Nebraska? No, you'd go there if you wanted to meet Mr. In Jail and Mr. On Probation. Oh, okay, fair. This is the correct answer. Running backs Glenn Davis, who usually ran outside, and Doc Blanchard, who went up the middle, played football for Army in the mid-40s. And next week, Grover will introduce us to Mr. Outhouse. All right, that's ten questions down. For ten more, let's go on to round two. Okay, pay attention, because all the sports questions in round two are worth more money. All right, let's go. How about it? Hit me with the category. Horses and beer. The category behind this question is horses and beer. It's going to be worth $4,000. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. If the world were controlled by thoroughbred horse racing enthusiasts, how long would Colt 45 malt liquor have to age in order to earn the name Colt? Two weeks, six months, two to five years, or ten years? Six months. No, but that's about how long one of those 40 ounces seems to last. Oh. And let's see the correct answer. A colt is a male horse that's two to five years old. Me? Well, I prefer two to five year old beer to malt liquor any day. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Let's go with Grandpa. Ooh, that's a 12 pounder, eh? All right, let's see what we're doing here. Grandpa and natural gas. All right, you're going to be pretty good if you get this one. It's worth 6,000 bucks. Okay, hang tight. Put your finger on your buzzer. Here's the question. Grandpa is to depend undergarments as what is to what? Alcohol funny car is to diaper. Nose plugs is to Greg Luganis. Secretariat is to envelope seal. Or cup is to Barry Bonds. It's all your... You're right. If they were reversed... <sighs> Anyone interested in the right answer? Here you go. Most dragsters, like alcohol funny cars, require a Kevlar diaper around the oil pan as a containment device for engine explosions. We tried to put a Kevlar diaper on Grandpa, but he complained about the chafing. Oh, okay, great. Yo, go give um, me a category. I had to pick someone up and shoot them in the net quickly. The category is... How to pick someone up and shoot them into a net quickly. You get this question right, you pocket six oh grand. Wipe off your finger and get it ready. Let's get busy. If you could score as quickly as NHL player Nell Stewart took between his record fastest two goals, how long will you have between scores? Four seconds, 32 seconds, one minute, 26 seconds, or five minutes, 46 seconds? No, but a lot of my dates can teach you how to get up and get out of an apartment in 32 seconds. <laughs> Great. Let's take a look at the correct answer. It took Nels four seconds to score twice. Unfortunately, no one timed him at the post-game celebration. Category time. What's it going to be? Why well, we can't have dinner parties anymore? Uh-oh. Press Futz Mitz Grimebor. Once again, it's time for a Nicker Clish Press Crew. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. Why we can't have dinner parties anymore. The opening value for this gibberish question is $10,000. Now you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'll be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. All right, then tell me, with what famous quote does this rhyme? Don't let the punctuation fool you. 
Shy Pam, she ate guest. Okay, see if this helps. It's a famous boast. Boasting athletes? Come on. A boast by Muhammad Ali. He said he won. Okay, let's see if you know it. So, okay. Congratulations, sure. champ. What have you got to say for yourself? Shy Pam, she ate guest. Wait a minute. Was that supposed to be Muhammad Ali or Bob Dylan? All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. I'm still wearing my jersey. Here's your category. I'm still wearing my jersey. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. On your marks, get set. Here's the question. If all the retired jerseys in the NBA were still being worn by their respective owners, who would be hanging from their stadium's rafters? The LA Clippers front office, the Laker girls, all the Sacramento Kings fans, or Chicago Bulls mascot, Benny the Bull? Uh -huh. Take incorrecto. Oh. And here's the right answer. The Sacramento Kings have retired number six in honor of their sixth man, the fans. So all their fans would be hanging from the rafters. That's got to be dozens of people. Uh huh. Okay, pick a category. Um, let's run a clean race. The category is running a clean race. Hello, this one's worth six thousand dollars. Remember that show, you. The Odd Couple? If sports writer Oscar Madison were assigned to cover his roommate competing in a Madison, what would he be watching? Felix cleaning up in a relay bike race. Felix dusting the batter in a pitching contest. Felix eating dirt on a mountain bike trail. Or Felix swabbing the deck in a yacht race. A yacht race? Man, that's the stupidest answer I've ever heard. I don't believe it. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go overboard. Hello! <laughs> Damn, got me. Let's take a look at the big money answer. A Madison is a type of team relay bike race. And I'm guessing a Felix is a race featuring panty waists on tricycles. How about it? Hit me with the category. Midnight Expo. And this category is Midnight Expo. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. So I heard Oliver Stone's working on this new movie about two major league rookies. One batter's right-handed and the other's a lefty. They take turns playing the same position based on who the opposing pitcher is. What's the most appropriate title for this Oliver Stone flick? Natural born bench jockey, JF change up, platooning, or reserve clause talk radio? It's a change up, right? Stop. Listen to me. Back and to the left. Back into the. Oh, lab. I guess not. Let's see what a good player would have answered. Switching the players in and out of the lineup to bat against different pitchers is called platooning. I get so depressed when this happens, especially when the runner gets shot down running the first. No, Johnny! Sure. Okie doke, give me a category. Oh, let's get some sex tips. This one's gonna be sex tips for sports fans. And this is $4,000 here. Okay, ready? We're gonna test your knowledge of TV commercials for chewing gum. Judging by their nickname that year, which of these World Series champions could help you kiss a little longer? The 69 Cubs, the 85 Royals, the 69 Mets, or the 76 Reds? Go for it. Kiss a little longer with the big red machine. Hey, I got one question, right? Jeez. Your mouth chewing tobacco fresh. Category time. What's it gonna be? I like to teach the world to smelt. Get your ice cold 19. Here's the category. Oh, I could I'd go like for an ice cold 19 right now. Smelt. Okay, two thousand bucks is coming your way if you get this one. Jeez, for the life of me, I can't remember this guy's name. You know, he was part of the Pittsburgh Steel Curtain, and he established the technique of lining up at an angle. You know, he was really angry until little kids gave him their coke. What was his name? Mean Joe Green, Merlin Olsen, Ed Two Tall Jones, or Jack Ham? Mean Joe Green. I remember he was in a coke commercial. Yeah, I guess I'd be angry too if my parents named me Mean. All right, come on, hit me. We need a cat. Can't go in again. And the category is 
You can't go in again. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Hey, remember General Douglas MacArthur, famous for saying, I shall return? Well, let's say Mac's an active participant in several sports. In which sport would Mac be unable to return after being pulled by President Truman? Hockey, basketball, soccer, or football? Um, soccer, right? In soccer, once you come out of the game, you can't go back in. Sounds like a red conspiracy to me. How about it? Um, with the category. What are you on? The attack is upon you. If you see two words together and they form a match, buzz in. Two thousand dollars will be yours if you're right, but each time you're wrong, two thousand dollars should be Oh my god, away. this <laughs> baseball organ <laughs> Jack Tech theme. Just remember the clue though. What are you on? Hopefully it's caffeine, because you're gonna need the speed. See ya. Well, okay. Deco Turf 2. I'm on a Mexican radio. Great. Thin layer of oil. <laughs> nice move! You scored big on that jack attack. Let's check out your final score. It's still negative. <laughs> yeah. That's the game. Hey player, you ever hear that expression "just scratching the surface"? Well, maybe you'll get that far next time, or maybe not, <laughs> since it seems to me that. It's true. Okay. Uh, great show, everybody. Great show. Um, cue the commercials, please. Thank you. And Cookie, um, can, you give me, uh, can you give me some information about these contestants? What's going on? Uh, listen, excuse me. Uh, whenever you feel like playing again, you just got to let me know, all right? Welcome to Wholesome Hearth. Today we yeah, let's, let's, let's play again. Okay, people, we're on. One more. Okay, pick a category. Um, that's going to leave Mark. The category behind this question is, that's going to leave a mark. This question's worth $2,001 bills. All right, pay attention. Here comes the question. You're in a gallery admiring an American landscape when you suddenly receive a sharp blow to the head. When you come to, someone says, hey, it comes with the territory. Where are you? The Salvador Dali Museum, a highlight court, the sidelines of a PGA golf tournament, or a boxing match with Mike Tyson? Um, should be Jalai Court. Oh. Too bad you didn't pick this. In golf, the gallery is where the spectators stand to view the match and the lush green landscape of the course. And it's also a real good place to receive a concussion. Sure. Okie doke, give me a cat. Uh, Baywatch, please. Two, two. I don't know anything about Baywatch, but Baywatch gets maybe. ugly. The amount on the table is three grand. Okay, imagine that Pamela Anderson Lee has joined the NHL. In her first game, Pamela gets into a fight. According to NHL rules, which of the following will garner her a two-minute minor and a game misconduct on top of the penalty for fighting? She deliberately removes her sweater, she kisses her opponent, she tells her opponent to hold her, or she uses a silicone or plastic weapon. Well, according to NHL official rules, if a player deliberately removes his sweater prior to a fight, it's an additional two-minute penalty and a game misconduct. Hey, I got it. <laughs> but I think if Pamela deliberately removed her sweater, she'd get the first star of the game. Category time. I need them all be? American balls. Oh wait, more material for Jeff Foxworthy. Ooh, right in the threes. That's gotta hurt. 
three. All right, let's see what we're doing here. More material for Jeff Foxworthy. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks. I mean, you might be a redneck. Okay, coming at you. Heads up. At Texas Stadium prior to 1993, which of the following could rednecks not do at a Cowboys game? Park their pickups right outside the stadium, gulp down cheap beer, holler at folks selling weenies, or stare at the pretty ladies dancing at halftime. Take it away. You know, loser is such a strong word. No, no. Here's what you should have guessed. Prior to 1993, Texas Stadium was dry. No liquor at a football game? Well, that's downright un-American. Uh -huh. How about it? Hit me with the Thanks, category. coach. Score! Number four! The name of this category is... Thanks, coach. Okay, this might be a toughie. It's worth 3,000 bucks. Everything in place? Because here she comes. On November 25th, 1978, Coach Grant Taft gave the Baylor Bears an unusual pep talk. What children's saying sums up the event? I'm rubber, you're glue. I'll hold my breath until I turn blue. Sticks and stones may break my bones or think I'll go eat worms. Hey, don't hold your breath waiting for cash on this one. Oh, come on. Anyone interested in the right answer? Here you go. Taft finished off his pep talk by eating a live worm. And it inspired okay. him so much, they ran out and threw a hail rail. <laughs> All right, come on, hit me. Um, hot, hot and juicy. Here they come spitting out of the burn. It's question five. By a nose. The category is... Hot and juicy. And there's $1,000 riding on this one. Okay, we all know that at Wendy's you can order a single, a double, or a triple burger. Well, imagine that Wendy's has added home runs to their selection of burgers. In baseball terms, if you've eaten all four sandwiches at one meal, what have you done? Gobbled up a full house, snarfed mega bases, eaten for the cycle, or sucked down four dingers? Go for it. No, and watch your mouth. <laughs> what? Come you know on. Could have picked, could have picked this. Sometimes you gotta suck down a dinger. And a home run in one game it's just facts. Cycle. And after that much fast food, I feel like this game doesn't know anything about sports. <sighs> Category time. What's it gonna be? Uh, fraudulent movie stars. Uh oh, best putts fits mine, whore. It's time for a tinker like test only questions I have any chance at, Here's really. gibberish category. Fraudulent movie stars. Opening value, $5,000. All right, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast, because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. All righty. Now tell me, what baseball phrase does this rhyme with? Lee Grant did defraud Clyde of the yarn. Okay, how about a hint? You'd say this about a pitcher. Okay, let's see what you got. Start. <laughs> and it's especially hard when the cows sure. are taunting you. Okay. That'll work, I guess. Okie doke. We'll I'm men with breasts. Naked skydiving tonight at 7. The category, men with breasts. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. So, you they feel exist they're out there? Me too. Let's go. If in 1995 you were a season ticket holder for the Miami Hooters, which of the following league's games were you attending? World Cup Cricket, Major Indoor Lacrosse, Arena Football League, or World Team Tennis? <laughs> it's all yours. They're an Arena Football League team. <laughs> Hey, yeah, look, I'm no longer suck. negative. Fans really go for those tight uniforms. Okay, pick a category. Uh, do you need a fluffer for that? Eight. Here's your category. Do you need a fluffer for that? All right, $3,000 is riding on this one. In at least two areas of life, plunging your shaft into your target with confidence and accuracy is key. If you were to make a series of porn movies based on the equipment used in Target Archery, which of the following would not be an appropriate title? Hot Lovin' at the Stroke Bar Hotel, Finding Jenny's Plunger Button, Leather Glove Spank Fest, or the Naughty Buttresses of Castle Love? Swing away. You'll find your plunger button on your bow. 
As for Jenny's, found it. <laughs> Should have picked this. There is no stroke bar in your archery equipment, but I know a great stroke bar in Bangkok. Uh -huh. All right, come on. Hit hey, me. Golf is the only thing I have any chance at. <laughs> And this category is Ivana Sea Golf Tournament. One thousand bucks for a right answer. Okay, imagine this. Ivana Trump goes to the Masters Tournament to find some new wardrobe accessories. What prize could she pick up for her personal collection? A belt, a green jacket, a diamond studded crown, or a gold club? Green jacket. And if she wanted to, Ivana could take the green jacket from the winner of the Masters Tournament. <laughs> But I don't know where she's gonna find green golf shoes to match. It's impossible. How about it? Hit me with the cat. How to enjoy being a girl. Hang <laughs> ten. This one's gonna be how to enjoy being a girl. Okay, swing this one and I'll give you two thousand bucks. Football great Joe Namath is known for many things, including those pantyhose ads he did. If Joe were to come out of retirement and take up a sport in which men often wear pantyhose for training purposes, for which of these could he be preparing? Competitive swimming, surfing, bicycle racing, or relay racing? Some male swimmers wear pantyhose while training to create drag, so they feel lighter in races. Impact is it, bro? I think Joe should do it, because hose feels so nice against newly shaved legs. Or, so I've heard. Okay, that's the end of round one. Let's move on to round two. All right, this is round two, and two is twice one, which means all the questions are double. Sounds good, huh? Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. That's twice one. Category time. What's it gonna be? Uh, wrestling and silverware. And the category is wrestling and silverware. And this one is not oh, gonna Jesus. be easy. Six thousand dollars. Ready on the trigger? Just trying to get positive. Imagine an episode of Silver Spoons in which Ricky ends up in a wrestling match. If he ended up with a silver fork after the match, what would he have? A booby prize for a lost match, a malformed wrist, a cut down the middle of his tongue, or two broken middle fingers? No, but that'd be the last time the little punk would use that method of communication. Oh, goodness. And let's see the correct answer. A cowl's fracture, also known as a silver fork deformity, can be caused when wrestlers fall on their wrists. And a silver spoon's deformity is caused by trying to be boyishly cute well into your 20s. Okay, pick a category. I uh, became the big man sing. The category is, but can the big man sing? And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Okay, help me remember this guy's name. He led the NFL in rushing every season he played and he never missed a game. He retired early to make movies and was one of a dirty dozen. Who is he? Earl Campbell, oh my goodness. Walter Payton, um, Jim Brown, or Billy D. Williams? <laughs> Take it away. R-O-N-G, wrong. <laughs> So bad. Well, in case you're curious about the correct answer, Jim Brown of the Cleveland Browns is considered one of the greatest running backs ever. He quit football at his peak while filming The Dirty Dozen with Lee Marvin in 1966. And who could blame him for leaving football for Lee Marvin? It's true. All right, come on, hit me. Uh, who done it? Uh oh, West Truck licks nine more. All right. Once again, it's time for a ticklish test. The category for this gibberish question, who done it's better left unsolved. Opening value for this gibberish question is 10,000 beans. Okay, now remember you don't have a lot of time here, so the less time you take, the more money you make. Okay, tell me what phrase does this phrase, run Phrase, okay. Don't let the punctuation fool you. Confess, it's hairy tough, Tess. about a hint it's a penalty in football no. a penalty for needlessly hurting others go for it type in your hand okay great I spelled that very boldly but it gave it to me Unnecessary, yes, but fun. Okie doke, give me a category. 
Oh, I need a jog bra. Come on, rep. Who's balling? 14. 14. <coughs> Sit down. Here's the category. 101 reasons to wear a jog bra. You get this toughie, and I'll give you $6,000. Psst. Hey, over here. Did you know that Stella Walsh, the 1932 Olympic track and field medalist, had a secret? Based on Stella Walsh's secret, which movie might you assume is about her? I Married a Monster from Outer Space, Personal Best, The Stepford Wives, or The Crying Game? Swing away. Hey, way to drop the ball on that one. No. This is the correct answer. Yes, over 40 years after meddling in the Olympics for the first time, it was discovered Stella Walsh was a man. Hey, I got a question. Didn't Stella no. ever shower with the team? Hello? No. All right, well. Category time. What's it gonna be? Great. It's question 15. It's question Thanks, sports. The category is assault with a deadly butt talk. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. All right, imagine this exciting episode of Cops. The cops surround a sumo wrestler and tell him to throw down any weapons. Based on what sumo wrestlers normally do before a match, what would you expect him to do? Extend his arm with his palms up, shake his little silk apron, stamp his feet on the ground, or sign an affidavit. <laughs> sumo wrestlers stamp their feet on the ground to drive out evil spirits and to make themselves look larger. That's right. That's necessary. It is. <laughs> Let's take a look at the big money answer. A sumo wrestler extends his arms to prove to his opponent that he has no weapons. Yeah, they've been doing it that way since they lost five referees trying to perform strip searches. Hey, where'd he go? How about it? Hit me with the category. Move your bike shorts and the doctor will be with you shortly. The category behind this question is... Remove your bike shorts and the doctor will be in shortly. And I'll pay you $4,000 if you get this one right. All right, let's get this ball rolling. If an Ironman athlete training for a triathlon is having problems with the condition known in sports medicine as penile numbness, what should he change about his training? The position of his bicycle seat, the amount of liquid he drinks, the insulation in his jack strap, or the number of sit-ups he does? It should be the bicycle, right? Because that's part of a triathlon. Improperly adjusted seats can cause penile numbness in male riders. <laughs> Curiously, these same seats have been known to increase the riding enjoyment for some female competitors. Okay, pick a category. Let's take Grandma for a ride. The name of this category is Let's Take Grandma for a Ride. Okay, 2,000 bucks is coming your way if you get this one. Hang on tight. Here we go. Let's say you're really cruel. You saddle up members of your family and let your friends ride them in a race. If your grandma places, in which position does she finish? First, second, third, or last? <laughs> to paraphrase football great Gail Sayers, my religion is first, my friends are second, and you're so far off it isn't even funny. Oh, really? Okay. To win is to finish first, to show is to finish third, to place is to finish second. Oh, okay, sure. Grandma usually finishes last, though. She says it's because her Jackie doesn't know when to apply the whip. Oh, that was a good one. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Sports and contraceptives. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Sports and contraceptives. And this one's 4,000 bucks for a right answer. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. Even though it's cheating, applying a certain glue to your rubber can soften the sponge so that the ball can penetrate more deeply. What the hell are we talking about? Field hockey, team handball, shot put, or table tennis? Take it away! Team handball? You mean like pocket pool with a lot of players? Yeah, that's what I mean. Let's see what a good player would have answered. We're talking about a table tennis paddle. And who would have thought that a table tennis paddle could have been so naughty? Uh-huh. Okie doke, give me a category. I'd rather be talk about releasing tension. The category? I'd rather talk about releasing tension. 
And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4000 bucks. Hey, remember the Saturday morning TV show, The Croft Superstars, with those superheroines Electra Woman and Dinah Girl? Well, imagine a particularly stunning episode of The Croft Superstars in which Dinah Girl is using dynamic tension. What is she doing? Practicing Tai Chi, psyching out a diving competitor, bodybuilding with Charles Atlas, or playing association certified tug of war. Should be Tai Chi, right? The next Tai Chi form you will learn is the dying crane. Oh. <laughs> Too bad you didn't pick this. Charles Atlas called his isometric methods of building muscles dynamic, dynamic tension. tension. Looks like Electro Woman kicked Sand and Dyna Girl's face once too often. Category time. What's it going to be? Four events, two dads, one winner. And the category is four events, two dads, one winner. Six thousand dollars is riding on this one. Okay, listen up. In an effort to instill real family unity between Nicole and her two dads, Judge Wilbur suggests a swimming event. If Joey swims backstroke, Michael swims freestyle, Nicole swims breaststroke, and Judge Wilbur swims butterfly in a medley relay, who would swim last? Judge Wilbur, Nicole, Joey, or Michael? Um. I want to say it's backstroke that's last. Swing and a miss. No. <laughs> Let's nope. take a look at the correct answer. Butterfly, breaststroke, backstroke, freestyle is the order of a medley relay. And the fact that we had Nicole swimming breaststroke meant nothing. Absolutely nothing. Really. How about it? Hit me with the category. Oh, scoring about the numbers. Can I remember the clue? Hopefully. I hope you're revved up because you got a jack attack. Focus for me. Here's your clue. Scoring by the Remember the clue. Do you think you're gonna score in this attack? Let's find out. Not a real bumper. Ugh. is enough. That was a safety one that uh Tennis, right? Yeah. Very nicely played. Look, check out what it did to your score. <laughs> Still Play embarrassing. The diver who can't swim. You're still below the surface, but it sure was fun to watch. Yeah, it looks like the judges say. You don't know, Jeff. Thanks. Okay, great show, everybody. Um, well, you I did as terribly at the sports trivia as I thought it would. So, uh, yeah. Now we're gonna play this a few more times at least, and my goal is to get a positive score. <laughs> Can I get a positive score? No I don't know. Until you are back down to 75 pounds but for now, count. I'll head out. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see cry, you later, baby. buddy. All, Igor love. You won the gold. Oh. I'm so proud. Igor, oh. I want a silver. Get away from me. And on Igor's training regimen, oh, there's Igor. no need to worry about those pesky menstrual periods. Igor's girls say girls forever. What are those? Breasts? Get out. I'm developing. Get 
Ow! Igor Groly's gymnastics boot camp. It'll be the best thirty thousand dollars a year you ever spent. Wow. Okay. You All right. and your friends have just played a hard game of hoops, and now you're ready to Ooh, chill hard game out. Hoops. Well, there's nothing that goes down cooler than an ice cold NBA draft. Good game. Mm, delicious Trust NBA draft. Mm, delicious. All right, actually, leave me now. Bye.